Indian Council of Act 1861. Here, Central Legislative Council expanded and now onwards non-official members are also allowed in Central Legislative Council. In 1862, the then Viceroy Lord Canning nominated three Indians to this Legislative Council such as Raja of Naras, Maharaja of Patiala and Sir Dinagar Rao. So, Central Legislative Council. Now, Indians can be associated with the legislative process. And Bombay and Madras restored their legislative power. Earlier, we have seen in Charter Act of 1833, their powers were taken away and submitted to Governor General of India. But by Indian Council Act 1861, their legislative power restored or decentralization process in Indian constitutional setup has had been beginning from this. Three new legislative council also formed in Bengal, North, Northwest Frontier Provinces and Punjab. In Bengal it formed in 1862, Northwest Frontier Provinces 1866 and Punjab 1897. Other than this legislative council related provision, there were two executive related provisions. One is portfolio system. The portfolio system started by Lord Canning in 1859 that got the approval of the government. Portfolio system means each member in Viceroy's executive council has given a charge, an independent charge of department and he will be finally responsible for taking final orders under that department. And Viceroy has given an extraordinary power to make ordinance. The ordinance validity was six months. So he could take this, he could issue this ordinance without the concurrence of the Legislative Council. Now, Indian Council Act of 1892. Non-official members allowed in Central Legislative Council and the Provincial Legislative Council and their number increased but official members majority retained in Central Legislative Council also Provincial Legislative Council also. So this Legislative Council got now more power that is the power to discuss budget and asking questions to the executive supplementary questions also. Central Legislative Council. Now, in Central Legislative Council, Viceroy can nominate some members. For that, he will get recommendation from Provincial Legislative Council and Board of Bengal Chamber of Commerce. So, in Provincial Legislative Council, Governor can nominate some members, but for that recommendation, he will receive from district boards, municipalities, universities, samindas and other trade chambers. Indian Council of Act 1909 or Morley Mindo Reform. It's also known as the Council of Act which is giving communal representation. So under this Central Legislative Council number again increased that from 16 to 60 but official majority maintained and Provincial Legislative Council numbers also increased but it varies from provinces to provinces, it can't be uniform. Their non-official majority is allowed. That means in some provinces, it, the official may have a majority. In some provinces, the non-official members may have a majority. Supplementary questions and resolutions on the budget has been also allowed under Indian Council Act 1909. So, the most important provisions under this Indian Council Act 99 is separate electorate or communal electorate. Under separate electorate, here separate electorate granted for Muslim community. That means Muslim can contest in post in that only Muslims can participate in voting. That is known as separate electorate. So, Mindo Morley or Morley Mindo reform. In that Morley is the Secretary of State in London. Lord Mindo was the Viceroy at that time in India. Lord Mindo was also known as Father of Communal Electorate in India. And this is the first time Indians included in Executive Council of Viceroy. 
so earlier indians were allowed to participate in the legislative process or legislative council now onwards indians are allowed in participate in executive council of viceroy government of india act 1919 or it's known as montagu chemsford act here legislature related provisions the list of subjects divided into two central list and provincial list central list are the list of subjects in that center can legislate provincial list are the list of subjects that in that province can legislate under provincial list a diarchy system was included diarchy in the sense double rule that means provincial list also again classified into two transferred list and reserved list transferred list means the governor needs to be accountable to the legislature or he needs to adhere by the minister's advice in reserved list governor can take a decision with the uh, executive council negotiation he is not accountable to the legislative council for actions taken under any subject in reserved list and for the first time in, in india bicameralism or two houses were introduced legislative assembly and council of state at a central level and direct election for the first time were brought under government of india act 1990 here the separate electorate process that had started in government of india act 1909 was extended here separate electorate extended from for other communities such as sikh indian christians anglo indians europeans and the muslims they were earlier had and limited franchise was one of the feature limited franchise in the sense it was only reserved for some property class or tax paying or educated citizens of india at that time now see the executive related provisions under government of india act 1919 that is viceroy's executive council now onwards will have 3 by 6th of indians a new public service commission was formed and a statutory commission decided to constitute for studying the working of the constitutional system in india and a high commissioner post was formed in london some functions of the secretary of state transferred to the high commissioner now comes to government of india act 1935 government of india act 1935 is very important because it brought an all india federation idea into the indian setup an all india federation in the sense that including princely states and the provinces but the princely states did not join so this all india federation provision of government of india 1935 not realized till the end and three list were constituted under government of india in 1935 three list of subjects that is federal list 59 subjects were there provincial list 54 subjects were there concurrent list 36 subjects were there so province in the provinces diarchy system was introduced in the government of india in 1919 that diarchy system in the provinces abolished by government of india in 1935 but diarchy introduced in central level that is a reserved list and a transferred list of subjects introduced but that provision also not came into force secretary of states council were there like 15 members you must be remembering that now that 15 member council is dissolved and a new team of advisers appointed from secretary of states residuary power so residuary power in the sense whatever subjects not enumerated under any of the list that was vested with the viceroy and under government of india act 1935 a central bank that means rbi concept came rbi formed in 1935 and federal psc provinces psc joint psc provision was introduced and a federal court or the supreme court was introduced also by government of india act 1935 other than that the bicameralism was also introduced in provinces bicameralism earlier introduced in the center by government of india act 1919 now bicameralism in the provinces introduced out of 11 six provinces have got bicameralism and the diarchy of provinces abolished we know that means governor is more accountable governor is bind to ministers advice 
but that uh, accountability or governor needs to function as per the minister's order minister's decision that provision continued from 1937 to 39 only later that abolished the governor got more freedom extended franchise so limited franchise some little more extended now around 10 percentage of the population came under voting power and separate electorate we know and communal electorate 1909 introduced for the muslim 1919 that extended for some other communities now government of india 1935 that is extending this separate electorate for scheduled caste people women and laborers or workers that's it thank you